I'm here with Therese of Mars of Thrace to talk about not a new album, but an upcoming tour. Finally, finally, you guys are hitting the road and coming my way, which I'm so excited, but I got a bone to pick with you. What's and that? that? about those beautiful hoodies. <laughs> you got a set. Don't, don't give me this bullshit of, oh, you can order one and get it in the mail. Like, no, oh. you guys need to set one apart. Hold it up for me. And then, you know, I'll pick it up at the merch stand here in Toronto. I definitely will, but the problem is that taking merch across the border can be a little bit of a gamble. Just wear it. Uh, <laughs> I'll I'll wear all fifty of them. I think there was like, wasn't there like a a Friends episode? Yeah, where, yeah, where where one Chandler, I think, were all of Joey's or whatever, one one or the other. They they were all of uh, all of his clothes. I think it was the the Thanksgiving one, if I'm not mistaken, something. Like that. I'll see what I can do. I will I will just boldly walk through the border crossing wearing 50 hoodies at the same time. I'll be like, I'm doing this for Pedro. I'm very sweaty, but Yeah, just explain it's it's it, there's a real good cause behind it. So just just I'm sure there'll be more than understanding. You know, you know how those border crossing guards are. They're like totally nice people and super understanding. They're they're real paragons of society. Yes, yes. I don't know how we would live without them. So uh, l let's talk about this tour. H how are you guys preparing for, it's pretty. It's a pretty long tour with a lot of dates, US and Canada coming all the way to the East Coast. So how you guys are preparing both musically and, and, and mentally? Uh, the, last time we talked, like around the time of the album release, I wasn't even sure. I was like, maybe we'll, maybe we'll never tour again. Uh, Casey has never done any extensive touring and I haven't done it in a really long time. But uh, back in the fall and then in February, we did some short ones just to see how we liked it. And immediately I was like, I'm going to do this until my body stops working. <laughs> it was just really fun. Uh, and Casey also felt the same way. Uh, so mentally, I think I'm just, we're just, just get, we're excited more than anything. Um, in terms of logistics, uh, stressing out about the border uh we do have our we did get our p2 visas so it's like we're, we're good to go officially um and then we're just focusing on getting the set tight other than that it's just it's just excitement at this point well what are your expectations for this tour do you have like a certain bar that you're hoping to to reach whatever that bar is or or you or you're like me you set zero expectations that way you never feel like you didn't achieve them my only expectation is getting to play evil riffs in front of new people. <laughs> uh, I mean, I've I've done a fair bit of touring before and DIY touring is, you know, some shows are gonna be good, some shows aren't, that's fine. Uh, I very much appreciate everyone who comes out to shows on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday though. Uh, each and every one of you have a very special place in my heart. <laughs> it's Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday that's the worst days of the week for shows? Yes, absolutely. Well, you're in, you're in Toronto, right? I'm in Toronto, yeah. I can remember. You guys are playing at the Hard Luck Bar, but I can't remember. I already marked it on my calendar with a big circle. Oh, we're playing at uh, Garrison. Oh, is it Garrison? Yeah. Okay, even better. I, I marked it already on my calendar with a big circle, but I can't remember what day of the week it is. It was... Uh... I have to apologize to Southern Ontario because uh, you guys got a less good part of the week because I kept being like, yeah, we, we can come to Southern Ontario anytime. So uh, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give Chicago and New York the weekends, uh, which is what ended up happening. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, they're just kind of just got to tough it out and hope. Wow, no love for Southern Ontario. Unreal. <laughs> All right, we'll be back. We'll be back next year, I promise. Um, but like in also in big cities, like there's amazing shows every night of the week too. So I would think that like in Toronto, like even on a even on a, a Tuesday, there's going to be a bunch of other awesome things to compete with. And stuff. I actually think so far the night that you guys are playing in Toronto, it's it's pretty much you guys. I mean, at least from my point of view, I honestly couldn't care less about who else is playing. Gajira could be playing next door, I still wouldn't go. So. <laughs> I, I got to come and see you guys. I'm so excited to, to when, when I saw the tour announcement, when I saw all of these dates, I was like, I, I was skipping everything looking for Toronto. And then when I saw it there, I was super happy. And I'm, I'm glad to see you guys making the trek over here. I know it's not easy. Like you said, in, in these do-it-yourself kind of tours, there's always a lot of, you know, moving pieces that makes things a little bit more tricky. 
And that kind of takes me to my next question is, uh, is there a success associated with the tour that you can say, okay, if we reach this goal, this tour was a success? It's more like a vibe. I don't think I've ever been on a tour that I did not feel like was a success. Like the, the really, truly the, the bar is, did we get out in front of new people? Like, did we, did we get people who'd never heard of us or seen us before excited about us? And that's, that's really the only bar. I mean, that's a bit of a pie in the sky because music isn't my job. So like if we break even, that's a bonus, <laughs> but I'm pretty, uh, I, I run a pretty tight ship with the uh, band finances. So we've, we've, Okay, I'm, I'm I'm jinxing us by saying this. We've never lost money on a tour. I I hope this is not going to be the one that's gonna that's gonna break that streak that you're on. Uh, is the merch you talked about the cost of the merch crossing the border? Is the merch a part of of that success to a certain extent, at least from a financial standpoint? Uh, my friend Jesse in the band Ken Mode once referred to them as traveling T-shirt salesmen, and that should give you that should answer that question. Yes, it is the biggest factor. <laughs> in the success in the financial success of the tour so like again anybody who is watching this who goes and buys bands shirts uh when you go see them live you're doing the lord's work you're helping them keep going i i just hope you're not one of those people then after when you see them at a bar or something with a shirt you're going to ask them if they know three songs <laughs> i've never done that in my life I, I, I find myself sometimes going to shows and picking up shirts from the opening bands because I feel like they need the finances a little bit more than the headliners. They need a little bit more help than the headliners, even if I didn't like their set that much or even if I don't know any of that songs. But now I'm honestly fearful of wearing one of their shirts in public because I'm like, I don't know any of their shit. I went to one show. I'm just trying to be a nice guy. I'm just trying to throw some money at you. Like, don't make me look like the bad guy in, in this picture. You know what I'm saying? You're still doing the Lord's work. <laughs> okay, perfect, perfect. Uh, what's the set list looking uh, like for, for this tour? Uh, well, we feel very obligated to support the exile, for sure. Uh, but like since I wrote all those songs by myself in a sad basement in 2017, I'm kind of excited to move past it. And Casey and I have written just about a whole new album together uh, since then. And we're very excited about that. And we're trying to be less excited about that so it doesn't like overtake the set, the set list. But we'll be playing some stuff from The Exile and then a couple oldies and then some brand new stuff. Ooh, some brand new stuff as well. Yep. All right. So we get a little bit of a taste of what the next record is going to be like. Yep. Do you have, do you have a, a, an idea or a, a generic time frame for when that new record will see the light of day? We are going to record probably this winter. And we have an amazing producer lined up uh, who I'm not going to tell you about just yet. But we're going to, this is, uh, we're done with our contract with Sonic Onion after this record. So we're actually going to be shopping around for labels. Oh. We've, had a, we've, had, we've had a couple offers already, but I want to see, I uh, want to see how large a fish we can get. <laughs> <laughs> we can get hey, to bite. You, you throw the net out there, you never know what you're going to reel in. You know, sometimes you get some tires. Sometimes you get some garbage and sometimes you get some big tunas. Well, I hope we get some tunas and not in any boots or. Uh... I, I'm hoping for some big tunas for you guys as well. So we already talked about the Toronto show, but let's face it. I, I know you don't care much about Southern Ontario, but let me tell you, Toronto is the center of the universe. So I'm honestly super excited to see you guys here. This is going to be the highlight of the tour, not because you guys are playing here, but because I'm going to be there. And, and this takes me to a question that we talked about last time we chatted is, do you guys need some help with somebody selling your merch or carrying your gear into the venue? Is there any way I can help you guys out? Uh, I mean, we're very efficient at this point and our, our touring setup is is quite, uh, quite stripped down, but I'm also never gonna say no. So I'll be there with many hats and then you just tell me which hat I need to put on. Uh, mostly, I think I want you to wear the friend and uh, metal guy hat. Enthusiast. Yes. Okay, I can do definitely can do that. Uh, tell me a little bit about the bands that are hitting the road with you guys. I saw a few of the names. Uh, I'm not sure if they're going to stay consistent throughout the whole lineup or if they're changing through the dates. What's happening from that point of view? Uh, it used to be that back in the day, uh, I, it was actually pretty easy and awesome to go on tour with a band that was about the same size as us. 
And that like, we've, I've made so many good friends that way. But these days when I was trying to book stuff, people were like, yeah, it's just, it needs to be you and two locals with a draw. So that model doesn't really work as well anymore. So we had to break it into chunks of bands we wanted to uh, take around for a bit. So uh, in Western Canada, we're going with Dead Quiet, who I think are the best owner doing band in Canada, personally. Uh, I entered a new phase of my life where I realized if I like a band, I can just ask them if they want to play some shows with us. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I saw them in Ancients play back in 2017 when I lived in Halifax, and it was probably the best heavy show I saw the entire time I lived there. So I just asked them. I, I was like, do you guys want to, you guys want to play some tour dates? And as it happened, they have a brand new record coming out. So that really worked out. Uh, yeah, they're from Vancouver. Uh, they will be doing a Western Canada up to the middle tour. So uh, everybody should go check up, check them out too. And then on the East Coast, uh, there's a band called the Austerity Program, who are actually a big influence of mine. Uh, they were on Hydra Head Records, which is uh, Isis's label uh, back in the day. And they're a really interesting two piece. They're a very loud, heavy noise rock two piece, but they don't have a drummer. And we just, uh, me and uh, Justin from that band became friends on the internet. And so he was excited when I said we were coming back and starting to tour again. And he said they were looking to do a similar thing. So I, I, we just been kicking around the idea of doing it together for a while. So we're playing uh, New York, Boston and Philly with them. Oh, wow. So who's playing the Toronto shows? There is an excellent band uh, called Spook the Beast, with featuring my friend uh, NJ. And then there's a band called Old Ceremonies, also. All right, all right. They're both fantastic. I'm really, I'm really looking forward to it. So, so as your mind starts to gear towards this this tour, what is your biggest pet peeve of being on the road? Man, so many of my big pet peeves are uh, based around the quirks of previous band members. <laughs> But Casey is a he's a he's a dream to tour with. He's like some kind of robot designed specifically for touring. Like he can he knows automotive really well. Like he he has fixed our van before, which again that's another like oh, one of the that's biggest, a bonus. That's a massive bonus. Like a huge amount of stress that happens on tour is potential van problems. But like he installed the back shocks himself the other day, uh, and he's just very chill. Whereas I've had previous bandmates have real emotional baggage <laughs> just like the just freak out it's because it's like a, it's a high, it's an intense it's an intense uh, how did thor harris put it everybody's bipolar on tour i think is what he said uh casey is very chill but i think i've seen him upset once in the 14 years i've known him uh yeah in terms of other but you know other... you know he's, he's bubbling up one of these days he's just gonna blow up <laughs> And I keep telling him, like, you're entitled to. Every, everybody is entitled to have a meltdown once in a while. It's it's part of being a human being. But in terms of other uh, other pet peeves, um, let's see here. Uh, when bands take too long to tear down, uh, like when they tear down their drum kit piece by piece on stage, come on. <laughs> We're all professionals here. Get it off stage first. That's, that's one of them. Uh, when um, fast food places on the highway stop serving breakfast far too early when I want a breakfast sandwich. I feel your pain. <laughs> Honestly, feel your pain. This weekend I had that same argument with someone because it's not it's not my fault. I woke up late and 11.30 to me still feels like breakfast time. Come on. 11.30 still is totally breakfast time. You know, like, especially if like we're tearing down and loading out of the hotel at like three in the morning. And you, you're going to deny me my breakfast sandwich <laughs> at, at 11.30? <laughs> I think that's unholy. That, I, you, that, that should never happen. Uh, do, do, are you guys having, it's just the two of you coming on this trip as far as, as your crew is concerned? Or you have a driver? Like, what, what's the logistics looking like? Uh, we were thinking about bringing a third person just because, like, we were, we were so slammed the past couple of tours. But nobody fits in the van. <laughs> other than us like it's like once once everything like all the like the whole rig and the, the merch is loaded up there's just not a ton of room for somebody else but uh we'll see how it goes like we decided to do this as a trial run just the two of us and if it's unmanageable we'll consider bringing crew next time listen i want to put this on record here so that you could hold my feet to the fire on it if you guys need a place to crash shower 
have a hot meal, let me know. You can definitely stay at my place overnight. Uh, it's completely up to you guys. I just want to make that offer out there. I know how hard it is for touring bands. I know how hard it is for you guys traveling in a van with all the logistics that goes into it. Um, I know how hard it is financially. Like I, I honestly know the the difficulty level that it is that go that a band like you guys go through just to put these shows together. So if there's something that I can do, if if you guys want to crash at my place, um, grab a hot shower, a meal, and whatever before you hit the road for the next day. Just let me know uh, the day before so I can make some arrangements. I can have my blow up mattress, not doll mattress, uh, ready. For, I, I have one of those too, but mattress. Uh, it's a long story. Uh, mattress ready for you guys uh, to 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 crash in. Just let me know whatever you need from me while you're in town. Like really, don't don't hesitate. Just let me know. That is hugely appreciated. It is it is really tough right now. Everything is really expensive. Like. When I was pricing out like just the unit cost of getting shirts made, uh, it's everything is so much more expensive. And then, of course, we have to pass that on to the merch buying people. And then gas is more expensive and food is more expensive and blah, 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 blah. blah. So, yeah, uh, it's enormously appreciated. One last question for you. I, I know that the exile has this sort of sourness to it based on, on, on the time frame and when you created this record in that lonely basement of yours. Uh, but when you look back now, I mean, there's been some time now between the release and where we are and you guys working on a new record. When you look back at that album, how do you see that record? How does it how does it look like to you now? All our all our albums are they're like snapshots of where my head was at at a particular point in time. So even if it was like a dark, like a fairly dark period, it, I'm still glad it got made. Right. Like it's still. It was a it, it was a part of my life. It was a thing that happened, and I'm I'm kind of glad there's a there's a record of it, so to speak. So I look back and I think, well, I survived that basement. <laughs> I am unstoppable. The sky's the limit. No, I I think sometimes difficulties and and times like that, you know, it's it's that old saying: what what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Um, or in some cases, it could make you handicapped but once again that's a completely different story i i'm glad that you you look at the record that way i i think it's a great record and i'm i'm dying to hear music from it when you guys play in toronto but i'm also really excited to see what the new music is going to sound like so uh if i wasn't already excited enough about your visit to toronto now i cannot wait uh so thank you very much for your time today i'm so excited i'm on on the the links of on the description of this conversation I'm going to put the tour dates, links for people to pick up tickets. Uh, I hope the garrison, and for some reason, I thought you guys were playing at the hard luck, but I hope the garrison is packed. Um, there's a restaurant at the front so people can come early, grab something to eat, it's like a bar slash restaurant, watch the show. Uh, looking forward to seeing you guys in Toronto. Awesome. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. See you. Hey, I'll see you next month. <laughs>